A big hello and a very warm welcome to Brand Equity with me, Sonali Krishna. Today I'm being joined by a very special guest. She's a global philanthropist and a humanitarian who has raised millions of dollars for charity worldwide. She has a singular motto and that is of giving back. I'm talking about none other than the very gracious Meera Gandhi. Thank you so much, Meera, for joining us right here on Brand Equity. Truly a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Meera, you know, when I was researching you and looking at, you know, your past, I mean, a lot of people know about the fact that you are such a global uh, altruist, philanthropist, all of that. And now, of course, uh, you've come to India for a particular focus, which we'll get into just in a little bit. But before that, I want to go back and delve into your past as, you know, Meera, the little girl. And I believe you, your mother is, uh, is Irish. Yes, she is. And your father is Indian. Correct. Right. And when I was uh, reading up on you, I believe that he was an Indian Navy officer. Yes. Right. So tell me a little bit about, you know, your younger years. Were you based in India? Uh, you know, what were your formative learnings? Were you traveling a lot? Were you based in one city? No. Um, as a child, uh, being uh, the daughter of a naval officer, we moved every two years, which I think when you're young, uh, you just do it. Mm -hmm. And I think now that I'm older, I understand the value of it because I get to a new city and I know how to adapt. Sure. Uh, I am constantly the new or the strange person on the block. And uh, so I walk into a room and I make myself at home because that's how it was. You get sure. to a new naval base and you've just got to go and show up on the playground and say, hi, I'm Mira, can I play? Sure. And I'm sort of doing the same thing today. Right. Right. You know, and what was particularly, uh, you know, a standout in your past was your meeting with Mother Teresa at the, uh, you know. Ashadan. Yeah, at, at the age of 16. Yes. And I believe that had, that's played a big influence in how you've shaped your life and who you are. So take me back to that meeting and what was so, uh, you know, I would say, mold breaking because you know for for me if you if any one of us looks back and looks at us when we were 16 it was all about being rebellious or going out to parties you know boyfriends and all of that i mean we didn't really think about uh, the world giving back charity so obviously something clicked within you so take me back to that moment and you know uh, you know i want you to jog your memory and tell me what you felt then and what was so uh, empowering in that moment? Well, um, when I was at 16, I was um, at the Cathedral and John Connon School here in Mumbai. Sure. And uh, it was an interact project where we had to go to Ashadan in Baikala to volunteer for some hours. So I went as a school project. And after that, I went every single Saturday for the last two years of my high school. I have to thank my mother for that because she really encouraged me to do it. Um, the first time I met, I went, we we went with a group. There was Vivek Vaswani, Seema Khanna, Vikram Gandhi, a whole bunch of us, and uh, we Devan Kote was there. And we our project was to teach them a dance. We were all students. We were all students oh, together. Okay. Yeah, uh, you probably know some of those people. Yeah, of course. Uh, who knew <laughs> they would grow up to be these responsible citizens of Mumbai? And um, I met Mother Teresa on one occasion earlier on, and I had just finished feeding two children. And Mother came in and she picked up one of these uh, kids who had just finished eating and they burped all over Mother's white sari. And I was so horrified and she just laughed. She's like, oh, now the food is digested. And we went right to the place where, you know, we used to hose the children down. Um, and I remember uh, Mother... I've met her actually on several occasions okay. because I went for my last two years of high school. Uh, mother was always very calm, very joyful. There was like a calm joyfulness that sort of just followed her around. I never remember her really being in the office. She was always in the different wards. There are different wards there. There's the children's ward, um, the, the men's ward, the women's ward. And um, she used to take me to all the wards. And um, once after I had finished teaching the kids a dance, remember they are handicapped. Some were dancing on their bellies, some on their backs, and they still performed. Uh, mother was so pleased. It was a performance for Unilever, and mother came to me and gave me a big, big hug. And I think that hug sort of um, stayed with me a lifetime. I understood very early on, early on that um, there is a great joy in doing things that are beyond and outside of yourself. So, right, right. I guess that was your first big moment of realization that this is something 
uh, giving happiness to others is something that I want to do. To want to pursue. Yes, I mean, I think that uh, it was. I think it was already inside of me, but after the first time I went to Ashadan, it gave me so much joy, which is why I sort of went back every Saturday. And uh, then raising my kids was very joyful. I think being, I was head girl of school, I was president of college. I think there were different ways in which I was giving back, which I didn't sort of realize. Uh, but now I think I really understood the mission and the importance of it. And when I speak to young people, it's always, important for me to inspire that in them so they understand that it's the only way to be. So today you're very, very busy with uh, the foundation that you founded, yes. which is uh, the Giving Foundation. The Giving Back Foundation. The Giving Back Foundation. Uh, tell me, when did you uh, a, set this up? Like, and what was the trigger uh, in you? Uh, what was this, 2011, 12? 20, 2010. 2010? Yeah. Okay, 2010. Uh, so, you know, tell, take me to that journey where you said, okay, now I need to put this down and start a foundation and start your activities. Well, uh, I had been doing a lot of uh, charitable work. I'd been doing fundraising in New York with the New York City Ballet, with Asia Society, with some very uh, prestigious institutions when we moved to Hong Kong. And at the end of 2009, I had been down to... Um, to the shopping mall and I came back, we were living on the peak and I was driven back to the peak uh, in a five series BMW and I got to the townhouse and I went to the top floor where our room was and I looked down and I just started crying in Hong Kong. I just felt like something was really lacking in my life. I felt sort of disconnected from everything. And when my then husband came home, he's like, like what's the matter? And I'm like, I feel like I've really got to do more and that's when we decided that we should start the Giving Back Foundation. I founded it then. We are now into 10 years of the Giving Back Foundation. Oh, wow. So it's kind of wonderful that we're doing this now. Um, and we just went forward from there. I identified that education was very important. Education is a door opener. It empowers people. So I started with the Giving Back St. Michael School in Delhi which we're running, it's um, the girls are now going into college, they're going into tailoring, uh, it's been a very successful project. Uh, we also mentor the Eleanor Roosevelt uh, students through, it's called the Eleanor Roosevelt Leadership Program every summer up upstate New York. Um, we're doing many things. The foundation really has three parts. One is the mission to educate and empower. We give scholarships, we run a school. The second is to be a catalyst for positive dialogue. So we sponsor the Woodstock Film Festival okay. Award for a producer, director, actor who's creating positive content. We sponsor uh, venues if people have to perform or have a positive message. And the third is the mental wellness component, which is um, something that we've just added because we feel that people may be very successful, but many people feel they are unhappy or they feel stressed. And so we have started this mental wellness portion and we do retreats upstate New York. We've recently, uh, we did the b for You TV series, um, which did very well. We talked about joyfulness, happiness, giving back. Um, and now on times we're doing something called Three Tips, which is running every Saturday and Sunday, sure. sort of in line with this mental wellness platform of our foundation. So tell me, if I had to uh, pivot with, with the same theme, you have uh, very closely witnessed uh, how the corporate world functions. Yes. Uh, do you think, globally and not just in India, globally, do you think uh, you know, corporates need to be better citizens? and need to uh, you know, take, uh, take on uh, more responsibility and more ownership in, 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 in you know, enabling and ensuring that the world is a happier, peaceful, and a more equal place. Uh, they most certainly do, uh -huh. but what is very interesting is that the change is not coming from the corporations. The change is coming from the younger people that are applying for the jobs. Uh, an example of this is um, a few years ago, I was told that when people out of business school were applying to banks, for example, the first question they would ask is, what is my bonus going to be? Now children and millennials and students coming out, they actually ask banks, and I use banks as a specific example because this is real. They ask banks, you know, 
what are you doing socially? What is what is the ethical standard of your bank? What are the what are the checks and balances? So um, corporations are being forced to change, sure. and it's coming really from the new and younger employees, which is very exciting. Nice, nice. Do you think today there is a, a large amount of a trust deficit amongst corp corporations uh, by uh, you know people at large and consumers? Do you think there is that? trust deficit and they need to work on it? I, I definitely think there's a trust deficit because corporations, when they started, no one imagined they would turn into these gigantic, ginormous institutions with uh, a lot of leverage and not in one country, but in multiple countries around the world. And um, they are answerable to shareholders and answerable to create shareholder value. And sometimes in only worrying about shareholder value, um, many things are missed, sure. uh, misappropriated yep. or um, unfairly done. So I do think that there is, there is mistrust and um, they need to be more transparent. However, you know, having said that, we are in the age of transparency and I think um, the digital age is rectifying quite a few things. Yeah, it's bringing about a lot of consumer activism. It is. Uh, I want to move to uh, you know uh, you know products that you're launching uh, you know uh, at the Giving Back Foundation, and I believe, uh, and you can of course elaborate on what they mean. You are uh, doing uh, a giving candle, yes, and you're doing a giving fragrance, correct? Right? Is there anything else? We're doing seventeen products. Oh, okay. Which are going to be in the market uh, early of next year. When you say market, you mean Indian market? Yes, oh, okay. Indian market. Okay. We are. Uh, we have a, a body spray coming out. Mm -hmm. We have a talc. We have soaps. We have uh, underarm deodorants. We have uh, shampoo, conditioner, body bath. Beautiful New York, Paris, with a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance that I've worked on myself with uh, um, with Man of Paris for ten years. Wow. And the product is at a great price. The quality is superlative. And I'm so excited about bringing it to the market because it's really an opportunity for me to give back to the consumer, to give some really incredible product at a great price. And I, I think everyone's really going to enjoy using it. And the fragrance is divine. It has 28 ingredients. It has jasmine, patchouli. It's inspiring. It's uplifting. It has rosemary, thyme. It's very unusual because we have blended herbs and flowers. So I'm extremely excited. Uh, but tell me, is this already available in other markets? Like, yes. is it available in the US? Uh, it's available in the US. It's doing very well. We've actually sold out of the candle. Oh. Yes, we've sold 25,000 units. We've sold out of it. It's selling on Shopify. It's selling on Amazon. Uh, the candle has done really well. It's the same fragrance. Uh, and I think with the fragrances to date, as of today, we only have uh, 1,600 units left. Wow. Okay, and what's the trigger for people to buy this? Well, 15% of the proceeds are going to the Giving Back Foundation oh, wow. okay. to continue the work. And the idea was to create money for the foundation as well as give consumers a really excellent ultra luxury product at a great price. Right, and so you've been working uh, you know, very hard to ensure what's right for the Indian market. Yes. What are your learnings, Meera? Uh, my learnings are we've we understand it's a very price sensitive market Undoubtedly. Uh, and so price is very important but it's a very sophisticated consumer okay it's also a customer that is very interested in body grooming uh, we are coming out with a very excellent skin cream which uh, again is Paris New York but um, it's a fabulous skin cream uh, so in, in addition to it being price sensitive, people understand quality, they understand value for money, and I think we can deliver on all those areas. So this will essentially be uh, all from the giving stable? They will all be called giving? Uh, they will be called giving, but we also have another line coming out which is actually going to be called Mira by oh. the Giving Back Foundation. Okay. Okay. And uh, that's going to be available in March. Okay. And that's really our skincare line. Okay. So the skincare line is going to be called Mira. Okay. And uh, what makes it special is that it's completely organic, even though it's Parish New York. It is sustainable. We are using recycled packaging, so we are also saving the planet. Sure. 
uh, and the bags that it will be given be given out in are made of jute and hemp. And so we're being very respectful of the planet. So it's very exciting. Give me a sense of your pricing so I understand how you're pricing it. Uh, for example, the soap will be at 125 rupees. Okay. Uh, the underarm spray will be at 172 rupees. Wow. Um, very competitive. It's very competitive. Yeah, very uh, the fragrance is ultra luxury. It's in a crystal bottle. That'll be 12,000 rupees. Okay. But it's the same fragrance you're getting in the soap, in the talc. Ah. Um, so I think it's going to be very very special i think people are going to love trying it they're going to love using it and the fragrance is just amazing i am wearing it okay. you can smell it here i can i can it's truly really wonderful uh you know so you said education is one big mission of the foundation it is because i uh i i look at my life and i think that education has opened so many doors for me mm. it has uh allowed me to analyze situations it's allowed me to make good decisions it's allowed me to have different kinds of jobs and it all comes from education so i think it's a very important uh door opener for everybody which is why i think we should sure Sure, it's one of your key missions. It's sure. one of our yeah. key missions. What would the other key mission be really uh, mental health? That's uh, mental health was our third mission, but we have found holistic living has uh, become so important because people are beyond stressed. And I think uh, the journey on this planet is really about being joyful. It's a beautiful planet. I mean, how many people really wake up and really think about the sun? and the beauty of this planet or really look at the stars at night we have just become so consumed by doing and achieving that we are forgetting this journey so i think it's becoming more and more important and we see more and more people uh who want to be reminded of this so are you telling me mira that uh you are always joyful and joyous i am really and honestly joyfulness is like a muscle you actually have to train yourself to look for joy in every situation because sometimes things don't go your way yeah. and um, you, you don't get the job or you're not with the person you thought you would be with for your whole life but it turns out to be the best thing for you so why wait for 10 years to find out it was the best thing for you except in the moment go with the rhythm of the universe and the universe wants what is best for us it really really does but when did you see this light in your journey um i think um i think i've been aware of it but i think i've really embraced it about eight years ago and how would you assess the current uh you know health and well-being of of people today i i am concerned I think people are more stressed than they need to be. They are too concerned about the future. I was looking at the millennial movement and I was thinking, well, maybe the millennials are more rooted in the present. In America, I see millennials going, they're more in the present, they're about experiences, they're not about belongings. A lot of them don't own cars, they don't even have a driver's license, they don't really care about owning a home, they all want to rent, they want to live all over the world, they want to experience the planet. But in India, I feel young people are very stressed. In India, they are where the young people were 20 years ago in, in America. I think that these two generations are very concerned about the future. They are unduly stressed and uh, they need to take a step back. My advice to the young people would be take a step back everything is going to be okay. Everything has always been okay. Everything is going to be okay. And sometimes um, we need to say that to people. And um, what do you think has been the impact and uh, the impact of the explosion of social media? What is it doing to people? I think, I think the, the social media, um, especially the Instagram, you look at what other people are doing and people look at it and think, oh my God, like, his life is better, her life is better, like why am I not doing that? Oh my God, that person was in Turkey while I was only in whatever, or maybe I should be in Iceland, or um, it's, it's keeping up with the Joneses, and I think that social media, uh, in, if it's looked at that way, can be quite detrimental. 
um, but social media has to be, you have to look at it as a tool to stay connected, you have to look at it as a tool to um, empower yourselves, but not to not to make yourself feel less than you are because each one of us is created perfect in the image of the universe. Do you think it's made people a lot more isolated because I'm very happy with my mobile phone or my or, you know my iPad and I'm disconnected from the world and there's enough content to keep me busy. So I agree. I think that we are more connected to the world than ever but we are more isolated than ever. I mean, between like Netflix on your phone, I mean, even now, I was, I just came from Bangalore to Bombay and I was looking, though normally I would have a couple of conversations. I mean, every person around me, they were watching something on their phone. I was looking at for people to talk to like, hello, <laughs> um, but people are just completely engrossed in it. Yeah. And it's a pity because I think nothing can compensate for the human contact. Before I let you go, I'd like you to leave me with, you know, three tips for my viewers and of course, uh, the audience at large to understand uh, from your point of view what makes for uh, you know better and wholesome living well if I had to leave uh, the viewers with three tips uh, my first tip would be um, there is no compensation for hard work and a bit of discipline my second tip was don't discriminate and don't judge anyone because you never know when you could be in that situation or when you could need that person and the third tip I would leave you with, and it's, um, I think it's cliched, but I cannot stress it more. Uh, really, try to love everyone, because when you look at everyone with loving eyes, um, everything is always okay. It's just like when you're in love, everything is fine. The person makes no mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I think having a loving and kind energy towards everyone makes for a really happy life. How do you develop that kind energy? By literally, by being, it's like a muscle, just by being kind, it. just by being kind. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much, Meera Gandhi. This was truly my pleasure and all the very best for your uh, giving back line uh, for uh, the Meera skincare range. And I look forward to seeing it in India very soon. Thank you and thank you for having me on your show. My pleasure.